Da, 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 da. It's time for Let's Talk Racing, Terry. Da, 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 da. Yeah, something like that. Da, 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 da. There you go. Da, da, da. Anywho, didn't they used to do that in the old days when they had news and stuff? Yeah. Could, could, can you believe the media at Talladega bitching and whining? They were, they were tore up about it. They couldn't get access to the drivers. Yep. Did they say something they didn't like? Did they piss a whole bunch of them off? I think they just want to get home to their comforter. <laughs> Was it that cold at Talladega? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Jenna Fryer was, she's the one who started the, the little controversy. She was like, you know, why do they just have to rush out of there to get on their airplanes to get home instead of hanging around 20 minutes to let us kind of interview some of the people and... I mean, it was Talladega, it wasn't a short race weekend. No. What's up, Skip? Hey, Andre. I should have had you come in tonight, Andre. Anywho. Yeah. We had doing solo tonight. Al's doing something with his wife. Dwayne is out recuperating from ankle, knee, knee, knee or ankle surgery, knee, knee surgery. Yeah. Um, what's happening, Ricky? And let's see. And then uh, Valerie, she's got a poor old migraine, so I sent her home early. Yeah. So, and Terry came in at 3 a.m., woke my ass up this morning. <laughs> I'm dragging, too. I'm, I'm deep. She's sitting in the back over there, yeah. reclining back in the chair. and yeah. I think she's going to nod off here before tuning. Hey, Ronald, how's it going? But, yeah, the uh, media must have pissed somebody off or just... Uh, well, I think this has been I think this has been going on for a while that you know they just the drivers and the team owners and the crew guys you know they're all in such a rush to get to the airport and get on the plane and get back to Charlotte you know and that they they've just started I think even Bob Pacos even had something to say about it they just kind of forgot about who brought them to the dance you know and. Um, you know, I get it. You, you've been there all weekend. You want to get home. You're wore out. However, the sport is in a spot now that they need media exposure. And they need to be driven by the fans being able to get some access. Sure, I agree. I mean, look at Saturday night racing stuff. Exactly. At the end of the night, what, what do they do? They allow the fans to come in, right. talk to the drivers, handshaking, autographing, and you know what? Some of these cats wind up with extra bucks in their pocket That's right. at the end of a night because somebody says, hey, you did really good. Here's a hundred bucks. I've had people and, walk up to us in Knoxville after the race and give us a hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. It, and I've seen it. Uh, it is yeah. nothing unusual. I mean, granted at the level the Cup Series guys are, sure, hundred bucks, that'll pay for me and the missus to go out to eat maybe. Maybe. But... Well, the thing the the thing about it, the sport is, uh, you know, they've got they're in some growing pains here, and uh, and actually one of the things that Jenna Fryer made the point of uh, is that virtually uh, there's only three or four real media sources that are actually covering the races anymore. They don't even send their reporters to the racetrack. Yeah, I mean it gets and, lower and lower. So you know. If you want to keep the sport growing, then I think you got to go out of your way. Of course, the drivers will say, well, I do this and I do that. I got it. I understand that. However, you know, when you're um, at that level of the sport where, the, you know, where your income is substantially higher than it would be if you're just running the dirt track tour, so to speak. Yeah. You know, you got to give a little to, to have a little, you know. Well, I I want to, while I'm thinking of, I want to give a shout out to Ronald Klein. He's been on the show a couple of times with Mastermind. You know who Mastermind is, don't you? No. He's the little teeny kid, about four years old, I think. Ronald, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that. And this little sucker can sing the national anthem. Oh, oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. And he will run the show if he's in here. He's awesome. And yeah. my poor cars are at 
Nate, when I'd have to know next time it comes out, I gotta hide them suckers. <laughs> I know. I hear you. Uh, no, he's cool. He's groovy. But uh, Ronald won the uh, Enduro Series. Cool. Uh, he said cool. it finally hit him today when Terry called him and said, "What sizes you need for your championship jacket?" Thank you. <laughs> We're proud of him. Show it off. And you got who else have we got hanging here? Richard Quinn. He jumped in there. Hey, Richard. Everybody, give a shout out to Ronald while you're over there watching too. Post a note there and let him know you're thinking of him. And yeah, he did good. He he was the last couple of races. He was busting his ass. He had one car, the front right um, ball joint. No, I don't think it was the ball joint. I think his the uh, the rotor oh. broke on it. Wow. And then, uh, then the race this past weekend, the engine blew in the car, so he had to grab his daughter's car, to, I think, I believe it was, to finish the race, to do the race even. Right, right. So, but uh, he managed to squeak out and got the championship win. The last time he, in the last race, got crashed, lost it. Whoops. Rut row. Rut row. Shit happens. It does. But you're now number one. That's it. And, that and you can number two on anybody you want in that series. That's right. You're number one. <laughs> everybody else is number two. <laughs> so, cool. but uh, that's good. Dude. That's good. He's got a large family, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. We went, uh, after we did the show that night, we all went out to the pizza place. And you know the, the long table we sit at, just yeah, the two or three of us? Right, right. We had that whole freaking table. That's cool. 20, 20 at large. Richard Rico's glad to see that too. He's like, come on in. Hey, Brandon, how's it going? Anyway. Um, yeah, the meat, the whole thing, the, the sport, is got a, I think it's gut check time, you know, across the board. Yeah. It's, you know, you got to figure it out. It's like, I mean, you know, like, like, like Ronald. Ronald says he's got seven kids. Right. It is with mastermind around it's like 20 okay <laughs> this is true of course now if we have Alicia here he'll go chasing her we won't have to worry about him but anyway um, yeah I mean like people like Ronald he's out here racing on Saturday nights mm -hmm. somebody comes up like we were talking about earlier $100 bill you did really good tonight sure. here help, this will help you along right and, and that a little bit helps Every little yeah, bit helps at that a, at the a, lower level. It, well, yeah, you know the, the grassroots level is what sustains the sport to begin with. You know, and, and there's and there's one thing I've always said to people that I've met over the years: never shortchange anybody that comes up to talk to you. No, that's right. You don't know who they are. Mm -mm. You don't know if they're going to be your next sponsor. That's right. You don't know if they're going to be your next meal ticket. To get to the next level. It's easier to be nice. You can just be nice. You know. Be inclusive. It's just like they say, why can't we all get along? That's right. I but, think there's a t-shirt. Yeah, like yeah, probably. It's one like with a smiley face too yeah. from Forrest Gump. You know, where the guy yeah. fell in the mud. And, exactly. Anywho, that's a whole other story. We're on racing. But he was running fast. He was. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, th there's so many... Drivers out there on Saturday Night Rices that you and I both know. I've got pictures of them at Langley even. Mm -hmm. We're talking your Kyle Larson, your mm -hmm. Ben Rhodes. We're talking Kaz Grela. Right. Right. We're talking, oh, geez, uh, number nine. What, what's his name? He just Chase. won a couple of around. Chase who? <laughs> Chase me. Chase Elliott be chasing me. Uh, whoosh. Anyway, so th these guys here, they're out there on Saturday night racing at Langley Speedway. Mm -hmm. uh, any of the... Yeah, Kyle Larson races, you know, and all he, the time. And yeah. he's yeah, he's, he's like another Tony Stewart. He wants to yeah. get down and race everywhere. Right. Or uh, Kenny Schrader. And Kenny Wallace, he still likes to get out there and race too. Kenny's going to be running full time on the dirt next year. Which one? The, the Modifieds. Which one? Wallace or Schrader? Both of them, man. Both of them. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and uh, I tell you what, I've, I've talked to both of them. They're 
Both really nice guys. Kenny Wallace is a freaking rip. He he's is. A nut. He's he's he has to be on. You know what the thing about wired Kenny all the time too, or something. The thing about Kenny, Kenny's got a lot of common sense. And uh, you know, when he says something, you think he's just mouthing off, but most of the time he's pretty much dead on about what's right, what's wrong with the sport. Yeah. That's what he mouths off about more than anything. And he's right. You know, it costs too much money. It's ridiculous. And, uh, but how do you put the genie back in the bottle? You know, that type of thing. Yeah. By the way, you know, um, just to let everybody know, it looks like I'm going to go back out to Knoxville and run next season with Scotty. Going to run some with Scotty next year? Yeah, he wants to run to 305. 305 yeah. this time? Yeah. And that works better for us that way. And plus, we got a guy that's going to look after the car where I hadn't got to be out there. Now, the 305 is, it, um, um, granted, it's not a 410, which is going to have a lot more horsepower. Yeah. Well, the 305s, you know, the thing is, it's a really good class. Yeah. It's perfect for Scotty and his budget. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the four, if you're going to run 410 or, or even 360 at Knoxville, Iowa, uh, it's basically world of outlaw. Yeah, you know, you're you're really you're not honestly. It's it's probably two hundred thousand dollars just to run Knoxville with a four ten after you already have your stuff. So it's 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 there's there's some big money out there, and and, and when the outlaw guys show up, you know they a lot of the times the locals beat them. You know, yeah, it's kind of, it's like when you go to Pennsylvania. But the 410, the, the, the 360, 360s are, is a great class. With the, the 305 class this year, they're going to have a crate motor rule. Oh, yeah? Uh, so it's basically the Corvette engines. You know, it's basically what you're going to be running. And, and uh, they put out, you know, about 550 horsepower. And uh, So they're still going to be able to, as we say, shit and get? No, they haul it. You know, they're running 135 or 40 miles bar around through there yeah and um and, and it's in the crate motor thing is cool because it's you know it's going to be you know checked after every race right you can't work on it you know and uh which will make it because the 305s they got to the point to where they basically were running 360s they just weren't they were just calling them 305 yeah and this you know you can't do that. with with the crate deal i'm presuming you're going to be able to have Everybody, like I said, everybody's gonna have the same engine. Yeah. Now the only thing you gotta do is have your driver tune it. and the tuning as far as right. the chassis setup. And, and that's a big deal at Knoxville too. Knoxville is a real, it, actually a different racetrack than any racetrack in America as far as sprint car racing goes. You know, you got Eldora, which is a big old. You drive around through there, wide open basically. Uh -huh. But Knoxville has it has such an aero dependent racetrack. You know. And you, you got to run around through there wide open, but if your race car doesn't, the wing is just not enough. The race car has really got to work. You got to get your shock and torsion bar package, you know, just right. Because if you don't run around there wide open, you're just not going to do any good. And uh, it's fun though. That's what that's what you want it to be. You want it to be fun. You don't. Fun wanna... is fun. Fun is fun. So Scotty's pretty, he's pretty torqued up about it. He called me this afternoon and, and uh, that'll be, that'll work better for us. Plus I don't have to go out there and work on the car all the time, which is, you know, with my mom and our business that you and I have, I don't really need to be in Iowa seven days a week. Iowa? Yeah. Anyway, plus I want to run something at Langley too. We've got to work on that. You know, maybe Peyton. Peyton or Timothy or... Timothy or somebody. We'll work on it. There, there's there's some stuff out there, so... Yeah, we're going to do the Chili Bowl. We're working on it. Yep. Um, going to get a GoFundMe page set up. Yep. And For our purple helmet car. Purple helmet car. What color is it going to be? <laughs> it's going to be black. <laughs> well, damn, what the hell you got a purple helmet car black for? We're going to have a black car. Jesus. Oh, my God. Well, Langley was good this year, right? Langley yeah. was cool. I got to go two or three times. Yeah, it was good. I even got pictures to prove it. Yeah. <laughs> it was cool. But, uh, 
wait for our guest to call in from Mexico City. Yep. Barbara Fava. Barbara Fava. She uh, she'll call. She does some crazy stuff. Yeah. She's unique. Unique even. What is she, Italian, living in Mexico? Yep, she's an Italian, been relocated to Mexico City. Wow. Driving on motocross, motocross bikes. Yeah. Um, also, she does some TV stuff. Sure. Um, she said the best time she had was when she got to interview her boyfriend. <laughs> there you go. Keep it in the family. Right. <laughs> but uh, That's it. there's a... Uh, there's a, lot, there's a lot of neat people out there. Next week, going to have some stuff. Uh, here's Dwayne doing some talking somewhere. Let's see. Oh, shoot. I forgot you got to slide the sucker down. Uh, oh, Ronald was telling us that, you know, Harris Truck, which is uh, Danny yeah. and Terry Harris, they gave him $100 uh, for a tire on the last race. That's cool. Uh and Richard Quinn says anything helps pays for tires and fuel. Pit passes. Yep. And he he likes uh let's see, he's great. Loves Kenny's videos. Yeah. Uh. Let's see. Brandon said he was at the Oxford 250 this year as well as just the team he helps out with. Uh, he has the stickers on the car. Well, a crew from the different team walked by, calling the team. I was helping with names and made gestures that didn't. They gestures they didn't know I could have went and wrote a check for them, for their team to help them out, save money for him that week. He said. Thank you. That's exactly right. Yeah. Hey Dwayne, how you doing, buddy? Hello, Dwayne. Lynn O'Neill's out there too, and. Dwayne's at the home front with his, probably his leg propped up. I'm wondering, How's getting, your knee, Dwayne? getting all that exercise from yeah. physical therapy. I, yeah. PT stands for pain therapy, I think, right. not physical therapy. Dwayne's going to miss out on food tonight, too. Yeah, uh, I'm sure Mama and the kid, the girls are yeah. helping him out on that stuff. What chapter are you on with my book, Dwayne? Oh, did you give him the new book? Yeah, I gave him a book up here before. I gave him a proof copy. Oh, you yeah. got the proof. Yep, we got uh, Terry's books out now, the newest. Well, it's going to be out uh, oh. November the 26th. November 26th. <gasps> I got an early copy. Yes. Son of a bitch, I like it. I know it. You got to wear crash helmets and seat belts. For That's for sure. Hey, you see mine? It's sitting right in the other room. Drama. Drama, drama, drama. <laughs> the only problem is my helmet's back at the, oh, at the no. garage. Probably a Haas device, too. You probably whiplash is definitely, Yeah. Anyway, he says he's, uh, hello, he's got recovery from the left knee replacement. Still cool. rocking it. Cool. Yeah, you can't say that's a pain in the ass because it's no. a pain in the knee. It's a pain in the knee, baby. <laughs> I tell you. Mm. Need to resend a message. Excuse me, y'all. So uh, it looks like Danny Edwards won the championship for the late models, right? Danny Edwards did that. He got the late model championship at Langley. Yeah. Now, the last two races this past weekend, Mark Wirtz won both of those. Yeah. What, what's up with that? Did he get his, get his shock package working? I reckon, or wild hair in his foot. Yeah, I don't are you, know. Are you driving it like you stole it? or? There you go. That's what it was. Yeah. What's the deal, Mark? Where you been all year, buddy? So that was good though. I like Mark. He's a great driver. I like Danny too. Yeah. You know. I was uh, talking with Valerie. They were they were having a good little party. Oh yeah. That oh, yeah. that Saturday night. Uh, she said she got home rather late. She had to sneak in. Right row. But the house has a uh, alarm system on it and it tabulates and tells anybody uh, when you come in. <laughs> So she didn't quite sneak in. Yeah, I hear you. He said, I just started the book. Sorry, we'll try to get it going again. Yeah, get up, get on it. We, we want a book review. And we got Mary out there, Pulowski. Hey, girl. Hey, Mary. 
Let's see. Actually, my sciatic left butt does hurt. <laughs> so, he's, so he's having pain now. That's because you're sitting down all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh, Lordy. But, uh, they have not got sidetracked. Oh, yeah. They were, they, she was telling me they were getting into the fire, fireball stuff and oh, everything. Oh, that's what she was talking That's right. And I said, oh, God, I said, I remember uh, back when, uh, oh, shoot, uh, Wayne Wyatt was running the track. Uh-huh. And uh, we were over in Virginia Beach, at the Virginia Beach Pavilion. We had the, the banquet there. And most everybody was staying in the hotel that's, you know, on the other side of the parking lot from there. But after, the, after everything was done, which I think it ended about... 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. We went back to the hotel. And the the bar shut down at 2. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. So then everybody and their brother was trying to find what did they bring to the hotel to drink. And everything was uh, being pulled out. Well, everything got drank. I bet. The last sure. two people standing was me and Danny. Oh, God. And the only thing I had left was a bottle of, of the hot cinnamon schnapps. Oh, I can't do it. So he and I were at 6 a.m. drinking that stuff. Woo. And checkout was four hours later. He was not looking too good. But I, for yeah. some reason, my metabolism gets rid of it yeah. quickly enough. Yeah, I hear you. I can't do it. But uh, Rodney Davis joined in. Mary said to say hi to you. Hey. So... <laughs> But uh, it was a interesting night that night. That's uh, fun, fun stuff though. You got to celebrate when you you know after it. The, the hotel was a little pissy about it oh, because wow. Oh, yeah. apparently a bunch of people went up to the pool level and, yeah. and got into the pool area Rut row. <laughs> after it was closed. Rut row. And uh, I think uh, from what I heard, everybody was trying to find. They were trying to get up with Wayne Wyatt. Yeah. And uh, somebody told me, oh, wait, and once he heard about it, he split and went home. <laughs> I think Chuck Hall was hanging around. Hudson Hall was around, too, then. Oh, Hudson, Hudson, Hudson. But, Hudson's uh, done well since he moved down to Charlotte. I'm I'm proud of him. Yeah, you know? he's, he's been doing good. He's having a fun time. Yeah. The girls, oh, I took and showed the girls some videos I had of him. Oh, Lord. And they were busting their butts laughing. And he, he and I are the only two that can watch him unless I show somebody physically. Right. I got it. I got it. Seems the uh, uh, employers <laughs> don't want to don't want to have their employees you know, uh, yeah. in the in the fun light, so to uh, speak. Uh, absolutely. But anyway, back to what we got way off sidetracked here. Well, yeah. also, dude, we want to give a shout out to our business partner, George Johnson. George Johnson, he's. Oscar, Emmy, Grammy winner. Runs yep. a big digital film company like Disney. Yeah. Uh, he's been sick. You know, he's, he's, we've almost lost him two or three times. He's been misbehaving, he's, got thrown in the hospital yeah, twice at he's least. been in hospital jail, but he's feeling better. Good. So we want to give him a shout out. We love him. We love you, George. And uh, we're back on our projects, so I think we're going to be okay. As I tell everybody, I want to hear from you, not about you. That's exactly right. That's right. So anyway, but we've been worried about George. George has been, we've worried about him, you know. And well, his sense of humor is back, which is snarky. He has a snarky <laughs> sense of humor. And um, he's cool. And, we're going to, and our buddy Russ Thompson, who's on every once in a while. Yeah. So we're going to chat with them both tomorrow. So that'd be cool. Russ is, Russ is I know stuff on Russ. <laughs> I know stuff. But we should get him on the show and then yeah, do the good. stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah I, got his, I got his I got his phone number. I know. I just was just on with him a while ago. But the thing about people don't know about Russ, you now Russ is the stats guy for IndyCar on on um Well NBC uh, totally it is. NBC and uh, so but Russ and I are, you know, we grew up together and raced carts together and uh, and people need to understand Russ is about six Six, maybe six, seven. Uh huh. But he is a, I'm going to use the word, he's a badass cart racer. He is, he is, you know, back in his time, he was, he was something else, you know. He could wad up, get those legs on that cart, and he'd go, man. 
And um, so anyway, we get you know we get together every Christmas and try to kill each other at the indoor cart shop uh, track in Nashville. But anyway, yeah, we need to get Russ on, and we just need to have a uh, vintage karting show. Get the Green Brothers, you know, because we that's who we all grew up with, and uh, and we all got great stories. We know stories about Lake Speed that nobody even knows. <laughs> You know, Scott Pruitt, that's a, that's our generation, you know. It's um, it's pretty cool. Anyway. Go ahead, I'm listening. Well, I'm just talking. Fun stuff, though. Russ is a good dude. He's in the know. And if you, uh, if you lie on your resume, Russ will know. <laughs> He knows in, in motorsports he has every stat that's ever been made, and um, and, and he'll every once in a while I'll, I'll say hey you want to fact check me on this because I don't want anybody rip it, ripping up on me on Twitter. He said no you're right so pretty cool stuff though you know. He says he's out eating. His wife is out of the town. Out of town. Who's that? <laughs> Russ. Hey Russ. He's Can't on hear you. He's on. I'm texting him. Yeah, he's on. He's got to go to Memphis tomorrow. So should we call him? He probably probably not. Yeah, call him. Let's see which one is that. Echo six. Okay. Are your ears burning? He may not pick up the phone. What 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 are you having for supper? <laughs> Red lobster. Red lobster. Yay. Oh, the cheddar cheese biscuits and everything. I love it, man. They still got the all-you-can-eat shrimp going on. Yep. Oh, that's cool. That might be a spot for us to go. I know. I know. Were your hey, ears? Russ. Terry's in here. She said, I was asking, were your ears burning? <laughs> no, they weren't. We were talking about you. We were talking about the, all the old go kart racing days. And uh, I don't, I don't care what you call me, as long as you call me in time to eat. That's it. That's well, right. We called you and it was time to eat. That's right. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Absolutely. Oh, hopefully we're interrupting you before you're eating or just finishing. No, I, I'm just getting ready to go. Oh, right. okay. That's cool. We it's only 6.30 down. here. Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 we got the show by ourselves tonight, so we're, we're calling everybody. Poor, poor, <laughs> poor Al decided that the yeah. wife was going to beat him to death if he didn't start spending some time with her. And... Uh, <laughs> Dwayne is having had knee surgery, so he's at home being pampered. Uh, Valerie's out with migraine, and then me and Terry are left in here, so we figured we'd give you a shout and give you some harassment. <laughs> Absolutely. Gotcha. Absolutely. So, what's uh, what's anything new and exciting going on? Uh, oh, I don't know. Just you know, the off season stuff. That I mean, a little bit of news this week about. Ed Jones and yeah. Jordan King and some of that stuff. Uh, what was going on at Indy today? Were they up there testing or something today? Yeah, they were. They were, I've seen a little bit on Twitter, but I haven't. I'm I've been sealing my driveway today, so I'm kind of been out of wow. touch as far as today goes. That's all right. That's work. Yeah, too much work. I don't know it, man. If you, I like if you, it when I paid somebody just to come spray it. Yeah. <laughs> That's better. I was going to see you, tell you if you needed more uh, practice, just come do mine. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Russ, um, tell tell Roger about Duffy Livingston and, and the video that you got from Lynn. Uh, well, there were, there were two guys that literally invented the go-kart in 1956. Uh, Lou... Uh, Lou, oh crap! I can't, I can't ever remember them guys. Art Ingalls and Lou yeah. Borales or something. Anyway, 
those two guys invented and built the first one. Well, Duffy owned a muffler shop in Glendale, and he started mass producing carts. And uh, he shot shot some eight millimeter movies. And it starts out, the film starts out with just two carts hammering around the Rose Bowl parking lot in 1956. And I gotta believe it's two of the first carts ever built. Yeah. And then it goes to West Covina High School and the, it's a, you know, it's a road course set up in their parking lot, but it's just the apexes are just set up with, look like boxes or something. Yeah, is that, yeah, yeah. And then it, then it progresses to Eastland Shopping Center, which was the first organized cart racing. That, that, you know, ever. Yeah. And and it was it was right by the I ten freeway, and uh, so many people stopped to watch. It caused such a traffic jam. The the police got pissed, <laughs> and they didn't get to run there very many weeks. The police ran them off. So at that point, Duffy just built the first go kart track. Right. Right. It's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, then, and 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 what what y'all and I bet Al would probably appreciate is is the the name of his go kart was go kart. Right. I mean, it'd just be <laughs> like if you built an automobile yeah. and named it. You know, the, the brand name was automobile. It yeah. was a go kart, go kart. Yeah, and he had those like so the go kart. He had those vests he wore that had go kart on it. Right. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So the go kart company sponsored a car in the nineteen sixty Indy five hundred, and Duffy went to the race a few days early and shot 600 feet of film. <laughs> and it's, it's some of the most incredible film I've ever seen. Unbelievable. I mean, he's in there, you know, he's in Gasoline Alley watching, you see a bunch of guys practicing pit stops. You see Jimmy Bryan sitting at a, at a machine that Wilbur Shaw built back in the 30s to to uh, build up your arm muscle. It's a, it's a big old steering wheel with a with a big tensioner on it, you know, yeah. that the harder the more you turn it, the harder it gets to turn. And Sam Hanks is sitting in a car doing a commercial for Bardall and just, you know, everything leading up to the five hundred. That's amazing. I was uh I was telling Roger uh about that and I said, you know what, that that film footage of all that early carding stuff that he shot, that stuff should be in the Smithsonian, you know with one of those little old carts sitting up there. Cause that's, you know, that's a, that's a big deal for, for the, yeah. the first, you know, the first video of that stuff. That's crazy. Anyway, so, um, and how, didn't, how, Duffy, when Duffy got older, did he move to Chattanooga and he lived close to he, Lynn? Yeah, he moved to Ottawa. He lived right across the freeway from Lynn. Right. And by the way, from, and, and, and Lynn, I mean, kind of took took Duffy under his wing, you know, like he was his own dad. And he even, and I mean, you know, he didn't do any of this to get credit for it, but he took Duffy to Washington because Duffy flew in World War II. Right, right. And right. Lynn, Lynn took Duffy to Washington D.C. to see the, you know, the memorial and the wall and all that stuff. And he got right. to do, you know, that. I can't remember who's, you know, there's some group that. VFW or somebody that sponsors that, you know, the whole tour where you go up there and you just really, they really put on the dogs for right. you. Exactly, exactly. And by the and, way, but uh, then Duffy, Duffy died last year at 92, so he left pretty much every, his, his daughter is some big shot at the San Diego Zoo, right. but she doesn't seem to care about any of this stuff, so Duffy just left it all, I mean, boxes and plastic tubs and everything to Lynn, and Lynn's got it all in his shop now. Well, you know what? And he couldn't have left it to anybody better to preserve it and take care of it than Lynn. You know, Lynn is... Yeah, oh yeah. You know, and of course, you know, I, for people who don't know who we're talking about, Lynn Haddock, uh, Lynn, I was telling some people the other day, I said, if you're going to rank like the top 10 of people in carding ever, I'm going to put Lynn number one. I'm going to put him up there because Lynn not only was a badass racer, his mechanical engineering skills were, you know, second to none. I, I just think Lynn Haddock should be, you know, the number one person out of, out, of, out of everybody as far as, you know, overall. You know, I don't know how you feel about it. That's how I feel about it, you know. You know, over, even over Lake, I think Lynn has to be number one, you know. 
Yeah, well, I'm, I mean, I'm prejudiced, but yeah, I think so too. But the thing that, the, that really tells the story is back in 2006, eCarding.com did yeah. a poll and, and just had people vote. And Lynn got, you know, Lynn got the most votes. So Lynn was voted, you know, the, yeah. the GOAT. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree, you know, because we know him, you know, and we, we you know, we, we've been, you know, we grew up around him, you know. And, uh, but yeah, I just think, he, you know, he stayed with it. That was his, that was his business. It was his livelihood. But, you know, just, you just think about all the national championships he won and all the other people who won national championships with his equipment, hands down, yeah. hands down, you know, and he still, yeah, well, I mean, it's like, the, you know, there was much people commented. I mean, there's a whole, you know, list of people yeah. commented when they voted and they said he could drive them. He could build, you know, he built the motors, he tuned them, he built, you know, he could right. be, he basically helped design chassis and stuff. And right. just this past weekend, he was in Le Mans. I mean, yeah. He was over at Le Mans working on a new motor for Yami. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I just think, I just, you know, I have all the respect in the world for him. You know, cause and the year Lake won the world championship, Lynn was the mechanic. Yeah, he was the tuner. He was the guy. He, you know, I've got some films from that race I need to get digitized and put up online because it's, you know, I mean, I it, they they started going in '73, yeah. and you know, I vicariously lived the World Championships through them every year. But I never realized until seeing the film how right. big a deal it was. Huge, monster. Yeah, I mean, they come out. It open it opens like the Olympic opening ceremonies. I mean, all the countries come out, and all the each country has leathers with you know their the drivers yeah. wear their colors the colors of their country and their helmets are all painted the same yeah and they come out like the olympic opening ceremony somebody carrying a flag and you know drivers come out their helmets under their arms and they parade out and everything and yeah. of course they do it in alphabetical order so you're watching you're watching you're watching you get through all these countries and, and then here comes these two hillbillies <laughs> carry lynn's carrying an american flag like he's carrying his helmet and that's the whole u.s contingent and them two guys won the race i i, I know it i know it it's it's amazing it's amazing you know what and, and you know the the first that's a and the thing about it the first time they went over there they got their feelings hurt so, but they came home and they worked at it and worked at it and worked at it and ultimately won it. I just think it's cool, you know. Yeah. It's well, just, the, even the better story about the first trip, I mean, they kind of pulled because they were, you know, they were the two big dogs in the, in the yeah, state. Right. And they pulled, they pulled all their stuff and thought they were taking the best, you know, of every of, of what the two of them combined had. And they right. get over there and they're out to lunch. Yeah. And thank goodness Eddie Cheever's dad. Yeah. Felt sorry for him. I mean, because, you know, he was, he was American and proud that these two Americans came over to give it a try. And Eddie ultimately finished second that year. So, you know, Eddie was a big dog in the factory. Right. And Mr. Cheever went to the Italians and talked him out of a chassis. And that's what, and Lake wound up running that chassis in the race, or they would have not even probably made oh, the name. It's, it's amazing. And by the way, you're right. And uh, and then guess what? That changed American karting from that point forward too with the chassis, you know. Oh, big time, yeah. Because right. Lake brought back a zip, I think. Yeah, that's what he brought back. He brought back a zip. And um, and I mean, our, you know, that's the first time we'd seen a bucket seed or you know, yeah. I mean, a lot of this stuff was like. Right. Right. I remember seeing it in Memphis for the first time after he came back in the fall of 73. I'm like, what the heck is this? I know it. You know, and Charles Toler, you know, who our our buddy who just passed away, this 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 past year, you know, he had a sea open zip. Uh, I don't know if you remember that or not. And, and that sucker, you know, he was the first one around that area other than Lake. And uh, so anyway, good stories. It's our background, but you know, you just start stop and think, you know, you got Lake and, and Lynn, but you've got, you know, Goodyear and you got Pruitt and you got Dismore, you got all those people, the Green Brothers, myself, we all come from that era, you know, and Kept on digging, kept on going, but yeah. And uh, but Lynn, you know, and the thing about it, what was the story about Lynn when he won the Long Beach Grand Prix out there in the karting? When he's when he the one that's supposed to get the the tryout with Roush for the Trans Am team, but Pruitt somehow Pruitt got the deal. What was it? What's the what's the backstory on that? You know, I'd. I'd I mean, I was there in 83, 4, and 5 with him, and I never right. knew anything about there being a Roush tryout for him. Right. 
I, I may be wrong about that. I mean, I think Pruitt, I think the Bridgestone deal, I mean, Pruitt, Pruitt and Lynn were both Bridgestone drivers, right. and Pruitt won in 82 and 83, and that might be yeah. part of what, you know, Bridgestone might have pushed him into the Roush deal, but I, I, I never remember hearing the, yeah. anything about Lynn doing it. The only thing I ever know Lynn did is he went to Mid-Ohio and tested a Formula Ford one time. Right, okay, sure. And that's about the only car that I ever know that he drove. Yeah. Well, he did good. Carding was his life. It is his life, and that's you know you stick with it, you know. And uh, he's made yeah, it's good. funny. I just got this. I'm poking around, finding a bunch of old video stuff, and I found both Speed Week and Motor Week did a, a little piece on the '84 Long Beach Kart race, and. Yeah. Uh, Bob Jenkins even says in the voiceover, he says, you know, Lynn doesn't want to go to Indy, doesn't want to go to, go to Daytona. He just wants to win more kart races. Absolutely. 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 Cool stuff, though. The whole Duffy Livingston thing, though, that's got to be in the Smithsonian somehow, some way. we got to got to figure out how to get it up there. It needs to be a little video, one of the original carts, because, you know, it's just, it's amazing. Amazing stuff. Cool beans. Well, it's on YouTube for anybody yeah. that wants to watch it. Yeah, I've been sending the, I've been sending the link out. <laughs> I got I got my boys in LA looking at it. They thought it was cool. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, alrighty. So what? So what did you have for Ed Red Lobster? He hadn't gone yet. <laughs> No, I'm get. I'm just. I'm getting ready to walk out the door in just a minute. You're oh, you walk. You went out the door to go to Red Lobster. Oh, okay, I thought you were walking no, out the door no, leaving no, Red Lobster. No, 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 no. Oh. So you're you're winging it by yourself. Ben's at school. Yeah. Your wife is like, what? She just tell you you're on your own. What? <laughs> she's in. Uh, she's in DC for work. Okay. I guess Roger. she's up there near y'all, isn't she? Yeah, Roger's lady. It's exactly right. I drove in last night. I'm, I got here at 3 in the morning, so I'm beat. She's trying to make the, the chair she's sitting into a recliner. Oh, yeah, I'm beat. It might kill me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Russ, let me let you go ahead and go. I thought you had already ate and you were getting ready to leave from yeah. there, not getting ready to leave the he house to go to there. That. <laughs> no, I, 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 like I say, I was, I, I was sealing driveway, and I didn't, I didn't stop until about two o'clock, so I ate a late lunch. So I'm just, you know, good. I'm dragging now. Right, <laughs> dragging right. and in no hurry, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, enjoy yourself uh, and and relax and take your time while you eat. Yeah, let us know. Tomorrow. Right. Let us know tomorrow what you want to do. Holler at us. Okay, right. I'll text you. Check. All right. Bye bye. Bye, Russ. I love Russ. I love him. First, I thought he was talking about he was he was there and was getting ready to leave. That's why I didn't mind talking to him. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize he was. I know he did the the ceiling and everything. Look, the, if the he driveway. was real hungry, he would just cut you off and go. I know he'd, he'd be so like Al said. It's eight o'clock. We're out of here. No, that's Russ. Totally. That's so funny. Yeah. His daddy was. Uh, you know, we, we grew up as junior carters. You know, and Lake and Lynn were our mentors. And of course, our daddies all run around together at the car track. Yeah. His daddy, Big Russ, he was something else, man. He was cool. He worked for Coca Cola. He was a salesman for Coca Cola, and he was a stickler for that cart that Russ rode. A stickler? Rode. What's a stickler? Stickler. S stickler. Stickler. <laughs> he was. Um, and you write books, right? He had to have, I know. It. <laughs> But that thing had to be pristine clean. He was shining on that thing all the time. It was amazing. And, boy, and Russ, Russ didn't care. He just wanted to race. At, at, at the end of the race, it's going to be dirty anyway. You know, Russ was like, he was 12, 13 years old. He didn't, yeah. he didn't care. He just wanted to race. Anyway. Uh, well, all righty. Anyway, I talked to Barbara. She was she got kicked into a meeting, so that's, that's why okay. she wasn't able. That's all right. So. Well, we had Russ. That's just. We got standby. What the heck? We need to get the Green Brothers on myself. As in Maybe Jeff? Get, you mean like Jeff Green? And, and Jeff and David Green and Mark Green. They're, you know, we all grew up to run, running cars together as junior carters back in the, the Memphis area. We, yeah. Raced, we did Memphis. We did Greensboro. Not Greensboro, but uh, Murfreesboro there in Nashville. We did uh, uh, Paducah, Kentucky. That was our little circuit that we ran. Right. And, uh, and we, you know, if there was a go-kart race, 
we were there, you know. Speaking of carts, did you bring your brace? My what? For your ribs. I did. Okay. I'm ready. I still got Alicia, some. Alicia Potter, I'm coming after you, sister. We're going to have to. <laughs> Um, we had got, a good time last time, though. Yeah. This Saturday, they have the Day of Destruction at Langley. Yeah. It may get rained out. They're talking about because the forecast is not showing good on Saturday. Right. And that usually starts at 1 o'clock, which I hate that because I'm here at the office till yeah. 2 and yeah. get out and head over there miss the beginning of the, some of the good stuff. Right. Yeah, we'll go karting. I love doing it. It's fun. I brought my rib, my rib brace. That's good. I'll show you how to do it, okay? Yeah, you know. <laughs> you saw me. You know what I do. You're lucky I was doing all the stuff and wasn't racing. Y'all be in uh, trouble. That's all right. Bring it. Bring your game, baby. Bring your A game. Uh, we have fun doing that, though. Yes, it, it, it was It was good. It's fun. It's uh, really I good. think we eventually raised about $100 to yeah, that's cool. To send in. It's either 50 or 100 I forget. It's kind of funny. Uh, you know, Russ and myself and another guy back in the national area, Tommy Crosby, and, and our friend Teresa Gamas, we all grew up together right. karting. So, and, and, and we have managed to, over these years, to get together, usually around Christmas time, yeah. and just have, we were buddies, you know, we were real buddies. And we get together, and since they do the indoor karting thing now, we get together and go do indoor karting and just try to kill one another. You know, it always starts out that you're out there just kind of messing around, and the next thing you know, stopwatch <laughs> everybody's trying to get the fast lap because you get your print out at the end of the day you know when you go over there and it's like ah and Russ like well you weigh 60 pounds less than i do it's not fair it's like that's uh, that's I, I used to give hudson a hard time we went to the uh what was it the uh what was the one on virginia beach oh yeah what is it yeah aik yeah aik american door karting right and he was out there and he was talking about how fast he was ah. Then, then when we took and did the the uh, the competition for the charity thing there with the right, right. Children, children of King's Daughters, I ran only five laps. I gave him my time sheet, and I said, here you go, Hudson. Dude. He wasn't so happy after no, that. No. Hudson, you got to get you And how much more? I weigh him by over 100 pounds. See? Come so, on, Hudson. you got to bring your A game, baby. You're going to do it. So. But it's fun stuff, though. But yeah. It always, always starts out, you're just going to have fun, and then all of a sudden... It's game on. It just happens that way. We get tickled ourselves like, oh, it, yeah. It's it's probably a good thing you didn't know me back when I was running that model. I know. Because <laughs> one of my sponsors was AJ's Raceway. Right. A friend right. of mine, Andrew Jackson, was his name. Right. He owned a, a race go-karting track yeah. out on Pembroke Avenue. Yeah. And we'd have racing Saturday <laughs> night, and sometimes a bunch of the drivers would come down there Sunday. Right. Right. And we would all get together at a predetermined time. And we would literally make him pull his hair out because we were doing some shit. I love it. Tearing love up it. stuff. That was the first it. time I, I did a ricochet on somebody. I bounced somebody into somebody else to wreck the third person. They wound up crashing. But they have this steel barrier this tall. Right. Spring steel this, this thick so right. that you can bend it and set it in place. Bounced them so hard they hit that that it jumped up in the air and the cart slid underneath it and it came back down. And thankfully it came down on the steering shaft steering so shaft, it didn't right. land on their legs or nothing. Cool. So we decided we better tone it down. Yeah, yeah, there, there are limits. <laughs> we were working them. I know. When, when his son was out there running, he'd be giving us, don't you be doing all that? <laughs> Your dad said it's okay. <laughs> Oh, uh, bless bless his heart. He uh, yeah. he passed away what? Yeah, four years ago now. Right. Somewhere like that. Uh, his <laughs> wife, him, Faith, and I mm -hmm. hanging out doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. He loved hot sauces. <clears throat> right. Oh my God, the hotter the better. I brought him Woo. one time. He came over to the house to eat. Yeah. I pulled out. I said, I got something special for you. Set it down. He's put on the food, started eating it, and his forehead just started whoof. <laughs> he goes I love it. whoa he says whoa. I love hot stuff that's the first time anything's done that to me whoa. <laughs> so when when he when he uh, at the funeral I had already talked to his 
to his wife and said, you know how much she and I right. did all this stuff. And I said, would you be offended if I put a bottle of hot sauce yeah. in there with them? She said, hell no. She said, if anything, that'll oh, be that's your... that's a great story. Yeah. She says, that's a private joke between the two of you guys. She said, she says, I knew about it and Faith knew about it. And she said afterwards, when I talked with her afterwards, she says, there were so many questions about why there was hot sauce in a bottle. I love it. And it was I called it. Screaming Hornets. I love it. I love it. Great so, stories. Oh. Uh, so. All right, Rod, you ready to... Oh, my goodness. Hey, that's about that time. We can go ahead and shut down. I'm sure we drove everybody crazy, all the crazy things know, we've been talking we about. Rambling. I was glad you got a hold of Russ, though. we got to get Russ on more. Hey, Becky. Hey, DJ. Hey, Jeremiah. Charlie Bryant Jr. I think he said something about he was either going to be running Enduro full-time wow. next year. Charlie Bryant, also, if it's I don't know if that's him or his son. No, it has to be him because I raced against him. Yeah. Yeah. He had like the 33 car in late model. Wow. He, <laughs> all right, I got another quick story. So we got three more minutes left. Uh, Faith and I were sitting up in the stands and Charlie and a couple of guys in his crew. Right. They had already been drinking a little bit and they were sitting behind us. And finally he goes, hey, pretty <laughs> Faith goes, oh, no. I go, yeah, Charlie, what you need? He says, what in the hell is in the front bumper of your car? <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, it was about three or four weeks ago. And we spun out and right in front of you, and you hit the car. He says, I, you bent the hell out of my whole damn car. I had to replace everything except the front clamp of that sucker. I said, uh, if you want to know who did it, I said, you have to go down and talk to Donnie. Down to Blackhawk Race. And I said, they're the one to put that front end on there. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh -huh. he was... He says, that thing had to be full of cement or some or solid steel because you barely hit me and it just made my car into a U. <laughs> oh, Lord. But, oh, oh, my God. It's right. All sorts of crazy stuff. Fun times, though. Fun Charlie, times. it was fun. It was fun. Interesting and fun. Yeah. But, anywho, everybody, uh, next week we're going to be... <sighs> I've already been talking with somebody, and I can't say too much, but there's going to be an announcement at Hall of Fame Wednesday, and after the announcement, they're going to be calling in and sharing it with us and everybody else, too. So make sure you join us next week on Let's Talk Racing. Rock and roll. Drive it like you stole it. Anna likes that part. Yes, she does. I know.